Good morning, greetings on you. I hope you are well. Right, on this morning's lesson, we are going to be looking at uh, the final part of uh, the greenhouse effect. Remember, we spoke about the greenhouse effect last, I think it was on Wednesday. So I just need to finish that off before we move on to factors that affect uh, the temperature of different places around the world. Okay, so we spoke, when, I, when we last met, I had uh, told you that with the greenhouse effect, uh, this is whereby we have short waves coming through glass and then they are trapped in a particular glass house to keep the heat inside that particular area warmer uh, during the night time. And then I gave you an example of how this greenhouse effect works on earth. And then with that example, I explained how gases are trapped in the atmosphere. Gases are trapped in the atmosphere uh, as the sun is shining throughout the day and then at night, those gas gases can't escape, hence the temperatures around us are warmer. So we call it the greenhouse effect because if the heat is trapped on earth in the four layers that we have, and then the temperatures are constantly high, it becomes the atmosphere is acting as a greenhouse. So today we're going to look at the effects of greenhouses. Uh, the effects of greenhouses. Okay, the impact of greenhouses effect on people and the environment. So if we have heat that is constantly trapped in the atmosphere throughout the day and throughout the night, it means that the temperatures on Earth will rise and this will cause a disturbance in how we survive on Earth. Right, let's look at how this will impact, right? Um, the greenhouse effect, that we're looking at the keywords now, the ability of the atmosphere to trap heat and remain warm, um, smog, a pollution and smoke combined with a fog, and then deforestation, the removal of trees. Right, um, the impact of greenhouse, of the greenhouse effect on people and the environment. People have been adding excessive amounts of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. This is enhancing the greenhouse effect and is causing temperatures to become higher. The higher the concentration of the of greenhouse gases, the more heat the atmosphere absorbs and reflects back to Earth. We call this a global warming. Many scientists uh, believe that global warming can result in changes in the climates of the world. Right? I think everybody has heard about global warming, eh? where temperatures are actually becoming too it and then this means that it disturbs the natural order of uh, our atmosphere. So this means that we might uh, be experiencing more rain, less rainfall, higher um, amounts of water in our oceans, melting of uh, the polar ice caps and so forth, right? The following table shows the main greenhouse gases, their sources and their contribution to global warming, right? So global warming is actually accelerated by how we survive on Earth. So for example, the gases that we exert into the atmosphere are the ones that actually cause the temperatures to heat, hence we have global warming, right? So the gas is methane, the source livestock farming, especially cattle, and rice production. Contribution to global warming is 18%. We have carbon dioxide, combustion of fossil fuels, decay of plants and animals and forest fires, which is 50%, that's quite high. And then we have nitrous oxide, fertilizers, uh, bacterial action is 6%. Ozone, smog, 12%. CFCs, aerosol refrigerants, aerosols and refrigerants, 14%. Now for CFCs, these are actually gases that you use every day or produce every day from your, uh, what do you call this one? The one that we use in the house, our air conditioners, our fridges, our uh, gases that we use to our doom, our chemicals and so forth. So these gases are the ones that produce CFCs because they contain a chemical within them that damages the environment. And let's look at deforestation. Deforestation is the removal of trees and it is also increasing, right? So the increase in the greenhouse gas can cause major problems for the earth and its people. High temperatures will affect the environment in the following ways. 
changes to habitats of animals. So this means that animals can no longer stay where they stay because the temperatures are different. So they need to find a new place to stay and then that might affect us. By the extinction of species, they cannot adapt to changes. So this means that if you cannot change, you the species will perish and then we won't have it anymore All right melting of permanent ice caps and rising sea levels so again you know in the north pole and the south pole we have uh, permanent ice caps that keep the temperatures low around the world so if they melt this means that the oceans will have higher levels which means that the water will increase in the oceans and then probably some of the islands or some of the places that have, haven't got water will now start to have water because the water is too much and then this will uh, in, end up in places being underwater. By right? changes in weather patterns and climates, I think everybody can notice that a uh, winter is not as cold as it used to be, and then summer is not as hot as it used to be. So that is some of the changes that we see in the climates. Then we have droughts, fires, and floods. So basically, the global warming is uh, the greatest contributor of these changes in climates. Right, a global warming will force people to move to places where there is enough food and water. Okay, that was in past uh, uh, times whereby people used to live off the earth. So if global warming had affected you, you have to move from uh, your lower places because the water is rising to find a higher place to live. Right, the changes to the climate, uh, this is increasing temperatures, rising in temperatures and increased rainfall. More severe storms, rising temperatures, decreased rainfall and drought. Health problems, we have heat stroke because the temperatures are too high and the human body cannot cope with those temperatures, then people will tend to have heat strokes. Increase in infectious diseases such as malaria and dengue fever. These are waterborne diseases. So if the water levels rise, these are diseases are prone to happen, right? Waterborne diseases as well as cholera are also gonna happen because of the rising water levels. Drop in crop yields will lead to malnutrition, right? If we're talking about a drop in crop yields, we're talking about some of the crops that we grow today cannot or will not be able to cope with the changing climate. Hence, if you're trying to grow a crop, like for example, maize, and there's no water, there's a drought because of global warming, it means that the crop will fail and this will lead to malnutrition in the population. Okay, let's move on to factors that affect temperature of different places around the world. Right, so this uh, particular topic is talking about how the temperature in a particular place is uh, affected by where you, where you are or what uh how close you are to something like for example if we're talking about latitude is the first one shows the temperature of higher places in areas which are closer to the equator while areas closer to the poles have lower places so factors that affect the temperature of different places around the world latitude will be if you stay around the equator it means that the temperatures will be higher because the sun is directly shining on the equator which means that the temperatures in that particular area are high and then if you stay at the north pole in the northern hemisphere it means that you're facing the equator is at your south and you're facing the north and there is no sun so the temperatures here are low okay and then because you're at the north pole that will cause your temperature to be the temperature of your surroundings to be low because there is no direct heat from the sun and then the same goes for the south pole it's at the south of the equator and then they're facing north which means they can receive sunlight from the equator but the sunlight that they receive is so weak because it's so far away it does not influence the temperature of their place hence their temperatures are low so latitude uh, shows that temperatures are higher in areas which are closer to the equator while areas are closer to the poles have lower temperatures i hope you understood that right the location of the highest temperatures and lowest temperatures of the world that is the ones that we just spoke about now so latitude will be the angular distance north and south of the equator all right then figure 2.2 Point two shows that the sun's rays strike Earth, Earth's surface at a more direct angle at a lower latitude near the equator. 
The sun's rays strike the Earth's surface at an oblique angle in the high latitudes near the poles. This means that A, the heat is more concentrated than at B because of the sun's heat because the sun's rays heat a smaller surface area at A than at B. The sun's rays travel a shorter distance through the atmosphere at C than they can do at D. Because of this, less insulation is lost through reflection scattering absorption. There is a smaller amount of atmosphere that terrestrial radiation conduction and convection can heat. All right, let's look at what this is called. Right, this is the influence of latitude on temperature. So this means the sun will be standing here, there, because there's zero degrees at the equator, which means the sun is somewhere here. And then there's direct heat, direct sun's rays at C and A. And there's a smaller space that the sun has to heat throughout the day as it shines, which means that the temperatures at C and A are basically higher than the ones at D and B. So if you look at D and B, this means that D and B is at the North Pole, which means that it's further away from the sun and there's a greater uh, portion that needs to be heated by the sun. Hence the temperatures there are lower and are influenced by the position that D and B are at. So if you're at uh, the equator, the sun's rays are directly above your head and then there's a smaller space to heat. C and A, and then the temperatures will be higher. And then at D and B, you are not directly above the sun, uh, underneath the sun. So this means that you receive oblique rays from the sun, and then there's a greater space that needs to be heated by the sun, hence the temperatures are lower. Okay, that is latitude and temperature, All right? Seasons. Okay, so seasons, I think everybody knows that we've got seasons in the world, and then each season has its own temperature, right? So this is influenced by how the sun or the world is rotating around the sun. So for example, if you look at the highest temperatures on of the north, the highest temperatures north of the equator, this means that the sun is tilted further away from the equator during summer in the northern hemisphere so oh rather closer to the equator here sun northern hemisphere that's summer so which means that there will be more space that is heated by the sun as it rotates in that summer season during the in the just summer season in the northern hemisphere and then if you look at the second one we have a summer in the southern hemisphere highest temperatures of uh, the real equator so which means that the south is now tilted closer to the sun, hence it receives more direct rays, and then we have a warmer summer because the world is tilted towards the sun during uh, summer in the southern hemisphere. The sun is directly over the Tropic of Capricorn on 21 December, so the zone of the highest temperatures lies south of the Rio Equator. This is the southern hemisphere summer. The sun is directly over the Tropic of Capricorn, Tropic of Cancer, on the 21st of June, so the zone of the highest temperatures will be north of the rear equator. This is the northern hemisphere summer. We call the zone of the highest temperatures the heat equator. Okay. So basically with the seasons, this means that the closer you are tilted to the sun or the further away to influence the temperatures in your particular hemisphere, and then that will be a season. All right. All right, altitude. Altitude refers to height above sea level. We have already learned that water vapor and carbon dioxide absorb long wave radiation at the, that the earth gives off. There is progressively less water vapor and carbon dioxide at higher altitudes. So temperatures decrease as altitudes increases, right? So you've heard the saying, the higher you go, the cooler it becomes, right? It becomes cooler because the air is thin. If the air is thin, it cannot absorb heat or it cannot uh, collect uh, or maintain the heat because there are no air particles or water vapor that actually uh, collects the heat, making the air, the air warmer around you. So as you go higher, the air becomes thinner. And as it becomes thinner, it means that you cannot collect or maintain heat. And then the temperature becomes low. As you go lower, 
like for example, from the sky to the surface, this means that uh, the earth has uh, water, more water vapor because it's much more dense and then the air is much more dense and then it can collect heat making the air around us warm, all right. And then the next one will be, ocean currents. So I think I'll have to do this one again as well. Right, air masses, air assumes the characteristics of the surface on which it's resting so that it is resting. So air that is resting on warm air, on warm ocean is warm, while air that is resting on a cold ocean is cold. Prevailing winds, which are the winds that blow, most often blow, this warm air onto the land and cause the land temperatures to increase or decrease. Right, with ocean currents, I'm going to make it very simple for you. Right, we've got the Indian Ocean, we've got the Atlantic Ocean. Then on the Indian Ocean, usually it flows down to the southern part of the hemisphere, which is Africa. Okay, so as it flows across the coast of Africa, the coast of uh, Mozambique, the coast of uh, South Africa, and uh, many other countries in the north, that air is, uh, that water has a high temperature because it's coming from the equator. So which means if the water has a high uh, temperature, the air above it is also warm because it is influenced by the water that is flowing underneath it. So as the water flows from the equator coming down to the south, uh, this means that all the areas that it's passing will be influenced to have a warm, temperature because the air above the warm water will be blown onto the land, causing the air on the land to become warm. Okay, that's the Indian Ocean. And then the Atlantic Ocean is flowing on the other side of the coast of Africa at uh, the Namibian side going up to Congo. So this means that this water is flowing from the southern part of the hemisphere, which is the South Pole, and then it carries a cold temperature. So the air, the water is cold, which means the air above the water is also cold. So as this water passes through the coast of Namibia, going up to TRC Congo to the Horn of Africa, I think, yeah, it's not the Horn of Africa, TRC Congo, that side, it means that the uh, air above the cold water is also cold. So when it's blown onto the land, it influences the land to have lower temperatures. Hence, the ocean currents will influence the temperature of where you are. So the stuff that I'm talking about now can be illustrated here in this diagram right here. So this means that the current which is coming from the equator is this one, which is darker so that it shows that at the temperature is warm. This current is coming from the equator, which means it's carrying a warm temperature. So the air above this current is warm. And then which means as it passes through the spaces, these areas are close to the coast will become warm as the Agalas current is passing. Then we have the Benguela current, which is coming from the Atlantic side, is coming from the South Pole, flowing on the other side of Africa, which means that these areas, South Africa, Namibia, going up, Tanzania and them, have a cold current which is passing, which means the air above this current is cold. And when it's blown onto the land, the, the, the temperatures on land become low. All right, that's good. I hope you understand, but I'm, I'm still gonna repeat this when we meet next week so that we can have full understanding of what is happening. So the next one will be your distance from the ocean. So you do know that the closer you stay to the ocean, the more your temperature is influenced by the ocean. This means that uh, the ocean is the one that actually controls what happens around you. So if I'm saying the ocean is the one that controls what hap what's happening around you, it just means that, as you know, there's more evaporation at a large or a body of water that is close to you. So which means that there's more rain because uh, the moment uh, you have the sun shining on the surface of the ocean, you have evaporation. And then when you have evaporation, the wood the water will rise as water vapor into the sky, into the atmosphere, and then it will be collected into the clouds where it will condense and cause rain. So the closer you are to the ocean, this means that uh, the ocean will be controlling what happens there. Right, so a brief example will be, uh, 
Dublin is close to the ocean and it has a small annual range in temperature. Kiev is further from the ocean and it has a large annual temperature range. Tomsk is <coughs> Tomsk is a very large annual range in temperature and is very far from the ocean. So the annual temperature range is is the difference between the summer and the winter temperatures every year. We calculate this by subtracting the average temperature of the coldest month from the average temperature of the warmest month in the year. All right, and then the last one should be aspect. Right, aspect refers to the direction in which a slope faces. Slopes that face the equator receive direct rays from the sun. They are hotter than slopes that face the poles and receive oblique rays from the sun. Uh, figure 2.29 shows that in the southern hemisphere, north facing slopes face the equator and are warmer. In the northern hemisphere, however, south facing slopes face, which face the equator are warmer. Right, so this is a good example. So this is your example of the South Pole and the equator, and then we have the North Pole on this side. So this means that if you're at the South Pole and you're facing the North, it means that you're looking at the equator. And when you're looking at the equator, you have more direct rays, which heat a smaller surface part, therefore you are warmer. Okay, and then, uh, at the equator, we have oblique rays, heat a larger surface, and therefore they are cooler, south-facing slopes. So this means this is the South Pole and this is the North Pole. So if you're in the North Pole, it means that you're facing back at the equator. Yeah? So if you're facing back at the equator, it means that you're looking at the South and you receive a oblique rays from the sun because the sun, you can see it, but it's further away from you, and hence it cannot influence the temperature. So your area that you are staying is the North Pole, and the uh, temperatures in, is influenced by the low temperatures that are in that particular place. Okay, so the influence of aspect on temperature in the southern hemisphere. If you're in the south, you're facing the north, and then you have direct rays from the sun, and then you take place with the warmer. If you're in the uh, north, you're facing the south, and then you have oblique rays from the sun, and then your area will be cold. All right. So when we meet again on Monday, we're going to be doing global warming. So I want you guys to do activities five and six on page 90 and 91. Activity five on page 90. Let me just open it quickly. Activity five on page 90. And activity six on page 91. Right, so this is activity six. This one is activity six, it's a bit long, but I know you can do it. Activity six on page 91 and activity five on page 90. There is activity five right there. So that'll be your homework for this weekend. All right, so. I will end the lesson now and then we'll discuss further when we meet again. Thank you for joining. Have a nice day.